Incidents and allegations of sexual harassment and assault are prompting calls for change around the world. And one policymaker in France is answering that call with a proposal that would fine men for lewd behavior. In today's Walk the Talk, Bloomberg's ongoing conversation about diversity in the workforce, we speak with Marlene Schiappa. She is French Minister for Gender Equality. Marlene, great to meet you. Thank great you for to coming meet you in. Too. Thank you. So next month, you're planning to present a bill in France to tackle violence against women. Why is it important to start with fining men for lewd comments or lewd behavior? You know, I think it's um, the same thing um, when you have first street harassment and then you have rape. So I think it's rape culture. So it's important to punish at the very beginning since the street harassment. Give us a sense of what kind of behavior you're talking about punishing. Comments, cat calls, what, what are you thinking of here? Yes, not comments, not compliments. If I say, oh, you're pretty today, it's okay. But uh, you know, we all know what it is when you're walking on the street and someone is following you and it's intimidating. So that's why we are presenting a great law with the Ministry of Justice to the Parliament this year. You said you're presenting it with the Minister of Justice. What kind of support do you have from other lawmakers in France? What's important to understand is that the President, Emmanuel Macron, decided to make gender equality the great cause of his five-year term. So it means it's a priority for all the government, and we're in this all together. Okay, we'll get to that shortly, but I want to get a sense of how punitive this might be. A parliamentary group suggested yes. uh, a fine of between 90 and 750 euros, is That's that right? It. That's it. We made a group of five parliamentarians and parliamentaries, and uh, they proposed to to have a fine for street harassment um, around 100 euros when you pay it by now, and it could be uh, 700 when you aren't able to pay it now by cash and you received it to your home with your family. So we think it's maybe bitter even time. Okay, so if someone has to chase you down for it, you end up paying more. Yes, that's it. Talk a little bit about what's going on culturally in France, because some women in France say that the Me Too movement uh, that began here in the U.S. has gone too far. You have celebrities like Catherine Deneuve yes. denouncing it for becoming a witch hunt against men. Why do you think there is this backlash in France? Yes, I think it's complicated because in France we are the hometown of uh, philosophical feminism with Simone de Beauvoir, but we are also the French of love à la française, you know, and some people, even women, uh, still think um, street harassment can be something romantic, like in the movie when someone is telling you Paris is so small for such a great love uh, and is giving you a rose, but it's not like that in real life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're saying that there's a huge distinction to be made there. Yes. So uh, this backlash against the Me Too movement, has it gone too far? Because I, I think of the headlines last week, uh, the French government indicated is sticking by its budget minister as he fights a rape accusation. This is kind of surprising given the headlines and the, the swell of, of, uh, of protests that we've seen around the world. Mm, of course, but um, there is two different things in this. Uh, for my colleagues, the uh, Minister of Budget, um, the Prime Minister speaks for all the government by saying he put his trust uh, in him. But we had different uh, semantical things. In the US, you have the Me Too hashtag. And in France, we have the hashtag Balance Ton Peur. Uh, I don't know how we can translate it, but it's quite different. And um, some people are not comfortable with the uh, with dilation. Um, but it's a citizen act to say, well, I saw violence and I want to say it. Got it, got it. Um, there's parity in President Macron's cabinet, but if you take a closer look at uh, the president and the prime minister's cabinet, it shows that there's no parity in the top jobs. And here we're referring to the top diplomatic or economic advisors. To some people, that could look like a discrepancy between what your government asks for and what your leaders actually do. Mm. How, do how do you explain that? I understand, but I don't think so, because, you know, when he was a candidate, when he was running for the presidency, Emmanuel Macron wanted uh, to put more women. And so we achieved to double the number of women in the parliament because our president decided to. Um, no other party did that before.